Hello. Hello, David. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you. Nice to see you. It's nice to see you too. Everyone is safe in your family. Are you safe? Everything is okay? Yes, everything is wonderful. <laughs> okay. So it's such a pleasure talking to you. I have a few questions. Can we start it? First of all, congratulations for the single Let's Love. Can you talk about more about the single? How was work with Sia? She's amazing, right? Well, you know, she's she's probably my favorite artist on the planet. We keep making records together since <laughs> like 10 years. Um, it's a record we met in confinement uh, and it's that's what it's about. You know, uh, at the beginning of confinement, I I was watching the news, it was so depressing. And I texted her like, can we just make a happy song that we would make people feel good and, you know, and and inspire them to go through this together and not against each other because there was so much pressure between communities. Um, so, so I'm sorry, I'm going to turn off the, this one. okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, so, uh, so that's what she did, you know, she received my text message uh, and the piano chords that I sent her and she sent me back a song <laughs> and then, you know, I produced it in that 80s feel um, and that's doing really well in, in Europe. We launching it in the rest of the world. So I'm excited. So all the process was really fast. Yeah, it was quite fast. And, and also it was uh, almost like making music when we were kids, you know, like no big studio, no sound engineer. Uh, I, I produced it on my laptop. She recorded her voice herself on her computer with her own mic, you know, and, and it shows that it's about creativity and not about expensive studios. And it's an amazing, amazing song. So do you think music uh, could help at this time that we are living? Of course. Uh, I think entertainment is essential and art is essential uh, for people, especially when they go through hard times. Um, you know, uh, it's... it's uh, actually a moment that I feel even more that, it, that entertainment is important because um, governments that haven't been helping uh, the, the artist community a lot um, but uh, you see that you know like okay when I did the two shows to um, to help with uh, people with COVID and, and help feed people that were in need. We did 50 million views on social media. It's completely insane. Yeah. It's like a massive, massive global TV show. And uh, this shows that people were so in need of entertainment, you know? Yeah, and we need it. We need you actually and your songs. <laughs> ah, thank you. How are the plans for Tomorrowland? How do you feel about playing at a New Year's party, but without a crowd? It's not hard. Well, I, can, I can tell you because I've recorded it already. Um, and I know how it looks. It looks so amazing. It's really incredible. Um, it's the second time that Tomorrowland does a virtual festival, but honestly, this time doesn't compare with the first time I've seen the images. It's, it's so spectacular. Like it, it's, it's just, it feels so real. I could not believe it myself. You know, it's, it's really amazing. And Tomorrowland has been, they've been always very creative when it comes to stage design and all of this, you know? Yeah. So, so in the same way, they were forward thinking again, you know, we're doing the virtual festivals and you'll see it's really like some Hollywood science fiction movie level of production. It's really crazy. Whoa, I want to I wanna see that. I want to see that for sure. <laughs> How do you feel about being the best DJ in the world again? <laughs> 
Well, it's it's fantastic, of course. You know, I'm very honored. I heard that 1.3 million people voted, so that's pretty huge. That's a lot. Um, uh, and they they're all from the DJ community, you know, from electronic music lovers. So it it matters to me, you know. Um, Do you feel any kind of pressure about that? About being the best? I, will, I wouldn't call pressure, but you know. Already it's amazing because it's been like, I don't know, more than 10 years that I'm always, you know, in the top five, like maybe 15 years. Um, but to be back at the top really means a lot to me because it also a way to salute longevity. Uh, it shows that my music is still connecting with a younger generation. And, and I love that. Nice. Of all your songs, this is a hard one. Which one is the most special for you? Um, it, this is difficult because I have a lot, but uh, if I need to choose one, it would be Titanium. Yeah. Whoa. Nice. Yeah, I think it's it's my probably my best song. Today, you making thousands and thousands of people dance, right? But which in arts and bands made you dance when you were a kid? Funk. I love, oh, in, funk means something different in uh, in Brazil, but like that yeah. 80s disco funk, that's what I, I loved. And Can you name soul. it some arts? Hmm? Can you name it some arts or bands? Um, yeah, it was like... James Brown, Earth, Wind and Fire, um, yeah, all, all this type of, of artists, Cool and the Gang. This is what I was listening when I was a kid. Really nice. What's the craziest moment in your career that you don't forget, never, ever? Oof, there are many, there are many, many, many moments. Um, I don't know. I. In Brazil, I did something that was pretty crazy, like playing um, playing Copacabana, Copacabana Beach. That was super crazy. Um, playing uh, the carnival. Uh, yeah, do you remember? Was... Uh, do you remember a moment in special? Yeah, and I loved playing in Bahia because people were in the streets, you know, following the uh, the track. It was really, it was unbelievable. I really loved this energy. Insane. And can you send a message for your Brazilian fans? Sure. What's up, Brazil? It's David Guerra, and um, I miss you very much. I love Brazil, you know that, and I'll be back very soon to dance with you. Lots of love. Mix.